Hello, hello everyone. This is Mike at Play Favorites. We are a friendly neighborhood toy store located in beautiful Front Royal, Virginia. And this afternoon, my goal in life is to teach you how to play Pokemon Labyrinth, which is also known as the best Pokemon game that you have probably never played. Alrighty, here's, what's, here's what comes in the box and here's how to play. You get a game board. I've taken the liberty of going ahead and setting up the game board in advance, but you also get a whole bunch of these tiles which show different pathways going through the wood. Some of them, you will notice, will have Pokemon on them. At the start of the game, you'll have all of these tiles face down. You shuffle them up, flip them over, and randomly place them onto the board. The tiles do not have to match up. The paths don't have to connect to each other. It should be completely random. You will have... Where'd it go? I had one... Oh, you will have one leftover tile when all is said and done, when the board is all set up. You also get 24 of these circular Pokeball tiles on the other side of each of these Pokeball tiles. You will see a Pokemon, and these are the Pokemon that you are trying to catch in the game. At the start of the game, you will divide these 24 tiles up between all the players. So in a two-player game, each player will get 12 tiles. In a three-player game, each player will get eight tiles. And in a four-player game, each player will get bu 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 six tiles. Alrighty, the first player to catch all of their Pokemon wins the game. Now that stack of tiles is going to go face down. You do not get to look at it. I'll explain that in just a second. Additionally, this is a game for two to four players. There are four Pokemon standees. We've got Bulbasaur. We've got Squirtle. We have Charmander. And we have, of course, Pikachu. On the corners of the board, you will have a yellow space. Pikachu will start his game there. Squirtle goes in the blue space. Bulbasaur goes in the green space. And Charmander will go in the red space. Now, each player is going to look at the top Pokeball on his face-down stack of Pokeballs. Alrighty, there's a Pokemon on the other side of that Pokeball, Pokeball, remember? Don't tell anyone which one it is, but that is the one which you are currently trying to catch. That is the first Pokemon that you're trying to catch in this game. How do you do that? Well, every turn, you take that one extra tile and you can slide it into any space on the board. There are 12 arrows around the board. Slide your slide this piece in any direction into that space into one of those arrow spaces. So I'm going to slide this piece in over here and you will notice that by doing so I have pushed another piece out. Now this is the tile that the next player is going to use on his turn to slide it through one of those spaces. Now, let's say I was Pikachu. I have a path that goes this way and ends on this tile or, it, and the, oh, actually it keeps going. And I also have a path over here. Basically, after you have slid a tile into the game board, you can move your Pokemon to any space along the new path that you have just created, as long as the pathways connect. You can't go through, let me show you an example. Here. You wouldn't be able to move across those two tiles because you see the pathway doesn't connect. However, if the paths were like this, then you would be able to move because the pathways do connect. Okay, let's put those back. Now, my Pikachu is on a pathway which connects him to this Pokemon over here. I'm going to move him right over there. I'm going to show everyone, hey, look at that. I caught that Pokemon. Great. I put it face up. And now I look at the next Pokemon, but again, I don't tell anyone which one that is. And then it's the next player's turn. Now, you're not going to catch a Pokemon every single turn. Sometimes you're just going to try to move as close as you can get to the Pokemon that you are currently chasing, and that's fine. Now, of course, it might go around the table, and by the time it gets back to your turn, you're no longer so close to the Pokemon that you are chasing, but that's part of the game. So in a nutshell, you have one Pokemon that you're trying to catch at any given time. We've got one extra tile. Every turn you take that tile, you slide it onto the board to change the labyrinth that is the Pokemon forest that you're wandering through. That pushes another one out of the board. After you have changed the, bo changed the board, you can take your Pokemon and move them to any space along the path as long as those path spaces are connected to one another. You don't have to move if you don't want to. Afterward, if you've landed on one of your Pokemon, great, you collect it, and then you are trying to collect a different one next turn. 
Um, the only rule as far as where you can place these extra tiles is, if I push it through here, the next player is not allowed to take this new tile and push it back in from the place that it came. So you can't just go back and forth treading water. You always have to change the maze into something different. That is Pokemon Labyrinth. Now, this is a game that is so easy to learn and so easy to play. The box says that it is for ages 7 to 99. I think that even a six-year-old could play this game handily. A six-year-old could play this game with a 10-year-old, and they would both be playing at a fairly even level. So it's a very smart game. There is strategy, there is foresight that is required in order to plan your moves, in order to put yourself in the best position to catch the Pokemon which you are currently trying to catch. But the rules are really, really simple. Every turn is really, really simple. And I think that that is part of what makes this game so great. It's just a wonderful game for kids and grown-ups and teenagers and everyone to play together. And the Pokemon theme here really, really works. You are just chasing down Pokemon, trying to catch all the ones in your stack before anyone else does in order to win the game. And of course, kids are going to hope that they got their favorite Pokemon in their stack. And every time they turn over a new one, they're going to be excited to see if it's one of their favorite ones or ones that they don't care about. Maybe you can even introduce trading if you want to make some house rules. Anywho, whether you like Pokemon or not, this is an awesome game. As you can see, I'm excited about it, and I'm not even the world's biggest Pokemon fan. That's all I have to say about this. Two thumbs up. This is Mike at Play Favorites. Thank you very much for watching, and have a wonderful day. Toodles.